All righty, folks, it's a Friday, so it's time to deconstruct some culture. Taylor Swift's new album is here. People are really excited. It's called The Tortured Poets Department, which is so tiresome. Oh, can we stop pretending that she's high art? Please, please, the tortured poet. Yes, she's tortured. She's so tortured. She's so tortured that she's worth billions of dollars for singing songs that are most appropriately sung by 16 and 17-year-old girls as a 34-year-old woman who's childless and unmarried. It's so boring. It's so boring. Tortured. Po- oh, oh, the angst. The feelings. Ooh. How about like a little maturity at some point here? Every time I hear artists like Taylor Swift, the tortured poets department, all I can think of is people who are actually tortured around the world. I feel like there's that, there's a very, one, one of my favorite headlines from The Onion years ago, it was a point counterpoint. They used to have a, a column that was point counterpoint. And the point was a little American girl, 10, 11 years old saying, I'm starving. And the whole article was about how she was really hungry after getting home from school. And the other one was a Somali kid saying, I'm starving because they were literally starving. That's how I feel about Taylor Swift and her tortured poets department nonsense. So she has put up a poetic post about the album. And uh, here is what the poetic post says. Quote, the tortured poets department and soft focus, soft focus picture of Taylor Swift. And then one of her lying on the bed and then one of her standing in fashion. And oh my God, wow, she does look tortured. She looks, oh, wow. The Tortured Poets Department, an anthology of new works that reflect events, opinions, and sentiments from a fleeting and fatalistic moment in time. One that was both sensational and sorrowful in equal measure. Uh, There are 31 songs? 31? Why? Why 31 songs? 31 songs? What the hell? This period of the author's life is now over. The chapter closed and boarded up. Well, no, it isn't because now you're just spilling your guts about it. You got to hear about how you dated a bunch of other guys that you ended up marrying. Well, yeah, good for you, lady. There is nothing to avenge. No scores to settle once wounds have healed. And upon further reflection, a good number of them turned out to be self-inflicted. This writer is of the firm belief that our tears become holy in the form of ink on a page. Oh, people who find this stuff profound. I don't want to be around them. Our tears become holy in the form of ink on a page. Can you mix your metaphors anymore there, lady? Like, uh, once we have spoken our saddest story, we can be free of it. It's Freudian talk therapy, but now you have to pay to listen to it. And then all that's left behind is the tortured poetry. The tortured poets department is out now. I just want to vomit. I just, it's so... You didn't suffer. Stop pretending that you've experienced real suffering because you dated a bunch of guys you didn't marry. Real suffering. You, you, you seem like to- absolute tortured, like really tortured. This sort of stuff gets at me. It, it gets at me because stop, stop being such a whiny pain in the ass. Like seriously. In the words of, of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger, stop whining. And why are you so whiny all the, the time? I know people who have have experienced actual real tragedy, actual real torture. There are people in the world who have kids who have cancer and those kids die. That's real. Then you get to talk about torture. You are not tortured because you went out with a boy and then he was mean to you and you couldn't communicate properly and then you broke up and then you went on your private jet. You're not tortured. And 17-year-old girls who are being taught to act like frivolous, ridiculous emotionally self-involved, puerile brats like this? Ugh, I hate this crap. I really, really hate it. And I haven't even heard it yet. I don't even know if the music is good or anything. I don't know. You know, it's, I'm sure there will be four chords because that's all she can play on the guitar. And um, four on the floor kick drum and all the rest. So, wow, just... Uh tortured post apartment. She's so deep, guys. She's so deep. Or maybe she's the shallowest person you've ever heard of in your entire life. She is a cheerleader who is dating the high school quarterback in front of everyone, and she's worth billions of dollars and flies around on private jets and sells you her supposed tears. Uh, do not like. Anti. We'll get to more on this in just a moment. First, finding that perfect sleep aid can feel like uncovering a hidden treasure. 
Whether you're struggling with occasional insomnia or battling chronic sleep disturbances, the right sleep aid can make all the difference in the world, which is why you need to check out Beam's Dream Powder. Beam is not just your run-of-the-mill sleep aid. It's a concoction carefully crafted to help you slip into the sweet embrace of rest without the grogginess that often accompanies other sleep remedies. Beam Dream Powder contains a powerful, all-natural blend of reishi, L-theanine, apigenin, and melatonin to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Our producers love it. Producer Savvy has been using it. It helps her get a great night's sleep, even with the new baby at home. Today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder, their best-selling hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Beam has delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and mint chip. Better sleep has never tasted better. Just mix some Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir or froth, enjoy before bedtime. Don't waste another night battling the bedtime blues. Go and get Beam today. Your weary self will thank you. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, take advantage of 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Ben. Use code Ben at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash Ben with my promo code Ben for up to 40% off your order. Apparently, there is a new trailer alert for Joker 2. So why don't we take a moment and we'll watch the trailer for Joker 2. So I, I have said in the past that I think that the tra- that the Joker 1 was overrated. I thought it was okay. But I thought that the entire magic of the Joker character in the Batman series is that you actually don't know his background. It's one of the best things about it. Right? In Dark Knight, Heath Ledger's Joker gives, I believe, three separate stories of his backstory, and all of them are false. Because the basic idea is that human evil does not require explication of backstory. Joker is about the explication of the backstory. And the backstory isn't particularly compelling. And then you never really see him turn into the Joker except at the end. He's just sort of like an out-of-control, adult schizophrenic. This one seems a little bit more interesting. Here is uh, the trailer for Joker 2. Let's go, boys. It's time. Baby, baby. Man, he loses. I got to say, the transformation of Joaquin Phoenix in terms of like his body, the only other person who does this is Christian Bale. Okay, and I guess that's going to be Harley Quinn and Lady Gaga. We use music to make us whole. To balance, so it's, a, it's some sort of musical, is my understanding. Else. I'm nobody. Uh, he's doing umbrellas of Cherbourg type stuff with the, with the umbrellas here, with the colorful I umbrellas. Done anything with my life like you have? Yes, it, 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 they're, they're using the usual. What if we take, uh, <laughs> what if we take a famous song, and then play it incredibly slowly, with one hand on the top registers of the piano? Let's get out of here. Okay, so it's, it's all fantasy musical stuff. Okay, I, I, I'm kind of into it. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of into that part of it. Okay, so the whole thing is they're living in a world of their own and, and singing and dancing because he's crazy. Okay, and you've got the other Jokers who are running behind him. Is there going to be any Batman in this? Because I'm less interested in the Joker and uh, and Harley Quinn as like their relationship than I am in how well like what evil are they going to pursue? I'm not alone anymore. Wow! They, they, by the way, I, I will admit that I, I like all the homages to the various musicals that I know and love from my childhood. Um. Okay. Like they're they're doing they're doing they are doing homages to like I, I could actually name every musical they're doing an homage to there in this trailer. Okay, yeah, no, this is this is a great it's a great shot. The, this 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 thing where she puts the the smile on and then he smiles into the smile, into the lipstick. It, it, that listen, it could be it could be great or it could absolutely suck. I don't think there's going to be any in between on this one. Like if it's if it's a journey into the mind of Joker, which it appears to be, and you know his kind of musical mind, that's fine. I, I just the part of Joker that's interesting, of course, is that he's supposed to be pure, unbridled evil, not just that he's a crazy person. So if he's basically just a schizophrenic crazy person who has musical fantasies while running around New York City, like you 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 do want him to actually have a motivation for the evil he's doing. If he's completely unconscious of it, then he's just insane and less interesting as a character. But with that said, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix is is one of the three best living actors right now. And so I will watch. I will watch. We'll get back to this in a moment. First, if you're a hardworking entrepreneur, you're trying to build that empire from the ground up, you know how valuable your time is. Trust me, I get it. You don't have the time to manage every aspect of your business. 
They tell you about an aspect of your business that's going to take up a lot of your time. That would be HR, unless you get Bambi. With Bambi, you're not just getting an HR manager, you're getting a dedicated partner who's available by phone, email, and real-time chat. They'll handle crucial tasks like employee onboarding, terminations, and performance reviews. With Bambi's HR autopilot feature, you can streamline essential HR practices like employee training and feedback procedures, freeing up your time for what really matters to your business. All of Bambi's HR managers are based in the United States and can support the nuances across all 50 states. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand annually, but Bambi starts just 99 bucks monthly. So if you're ready to unleash your business's full potential, don't wait another minute. Call Bambi HR today. Schedule your free consultation by visiting Bambi.com right now. Type Ben Shapiro under podcast when you sign up. Spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Ben Shapiro to get started. HR can up your time and your money. Yeah, that's why you should check out Bambi. Go check them out right now. Bambi.com. The designer for the actress Zendaya. So you've seen the dresses that she's worn to a bunch of premieres. And, you know, they, they've ranged from the kind of normal to the extraordinarily bizarre. Her designer is a person named Law Roach. I, I don't know if that is his actual name, like given at birth, Wh- whatever it is. Law Roach is the, I guess his name is Lawrence Roach, which makes more sense. Calls himself Law. And uh, he has styled many celebrities over time. Apparently, he is now saying that he would like to style celebrities in the accoutrement of pornography, which, frankly, I'm not sure how that would be different from what most celebrities are wearing these days. So uh, here he was explaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, porn is the next one. I'll just love to dive into the world of porn and see how I could translate porn and hardcore sex into fashion. Dying to do that. What would that even mean? I don't even know what that would mean. I mean, to, to be to be frank. Now, granted, my experience with pornography is somewhat limited. But I'm just wondering why you would want to do that. Why is it necessary to mainstream pornography in every aspect of our society? And maybe it has to do with the fact that none of the designers in the modern day are family people. None of them are married and have families in a traditional way. They they all live lifestyles that are not traditional. And what that means is that when it comes to designing fashion, they're not interested in classy or or feminizing Right? If you go back to fashion of the 1950s, the 1960s, if you go back to, to the fashions at, at more traditional times in American life, the design of fashion for women particularly is to make women look more feminine. That is the idea. That's why if you look back at the Oscars in the 1950s, every woman looks glamorous and every man looks like a dude. And now the idea is that the height of fashion is androgyny. Now, I've had periods in American life, particularly decadent periods, where you end up with a more androgynous look. Famously, the 1920s were like this before the reversion back to a sort of cultural conservatism in the 1930s. And then, of course, the 1960s and 70s were more androgynous before a backlash that was the 80s and 90s, which was more traditionalist. And now we are back in full-scale androgyny. Here's the thing about pornography. Pornography makes women look terrible. Pornography is about the objectification of women. There is nothing less pro-woman than pornography. Because, of course, men think about women in sexual ways. Of course they do. Mammalian biology was built for it. That does not mean that women are not to be glorified and treated as wonderful human beings while making them attractive. Both of those things are possible. The fact that that there has been this attempt in our pop culture to mainstream pornography. I mean, Kim Kardashian is only famous because she did an incredibly graphic porn video. That is why she's a billionaire today. And this is an easy way to riches for a wide variety of, of people is to effectively engage in pornography, and call it something else. Pretend that OnlyFans is actually an act of female empowerment. That when you have a a beautiful woman like Zendaya, what you really ought to do is you ought to reduce her to a piece of of prurient meat. It's it's bizarre, and, and weirdly enough, it actually does not make Zendaya more unique. See, the thing is about pornography and men, and when it comes to porn, men are typically not looking at the woman's face a whole hell of a lot. Right? They are looking at the woman's body a lot. I mean, there, there's good social science to back this. That men tend to actually see women as a disaggregated series of, of body parts. Like they, they will notice the body parts before they notice the face. They've done eye tracking tests on this sort of stuff. 
Well, if you're a famous actress, you presumably want people to see your face. You want them to see you as more than an assemblage of sexual body parts. That's why you're an actress and not a porn actress. The fact that this dolt would like to turn Zendaya into a porn star in the name of of what? Sexual liberty? Is really, really stupid. It also is weirdly desexualizing because it turns out that like a nudist beach, when everybody is naked all the time, it actually ends up being less sexy. This is why people are now reverting to the onlines where they can have all of their whims catered to. So now a tech executive named Greg Eisenberg, CEO of Late Checkout, he has written a blog post on X in which he shared that he met a man in Miami who admits he spends 10000 a month on AI girlfriends. I thought he was kidding, Eisenberg wrote, but he's a 24-year-old single guy who loves it. When Eisenberg asked what he loved about it, the Miami man is quoted as saying, some people play video games, I play with the AI girlfriends. I don't even know what that means. Eisenberg said he was told by the man, I love that I could use voice notes now with my AI girlfriend. He says, I get to customize her. Likes, dislikes, etc. It's comfort at the end of the day. Apparently, these AI sites use AI algorithms to generate virtual and fictional characters or companions that you can communicate through voice notes with. The Miami man said, it's kind of like dating apps. You're not only one. So once these are connected, obviously, with the actual physical robots, then presumably women are over. But this, of course, comes from a poisonous view of what women are and what other human beings are. The reduction of human beings to basically meat puppets who you can manipulate. Eventually, somebody's going to create a meat puppet that doesn't age and it says everything you want it to say. And human relationships are going to become sterile and terrible. That is the direction in which we are very, very quickly moving. And uh, the rise of the AI girlfriend is just one aspect of that, obviously. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 